Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In this lecture, I'll discuss tumor-like conditions. By the end of this lecture, you'd be able to define what tumor-like conditions are. You will know how important it is to know them, and you know how to classify the tumor-like conditions and how to differentiate them from the real tumors. The definition is as follows. They are non-neoplastic lesions of bone and soft tissues that may clinically, radiographically, or pathologically mimic a neoplasm. Why is it important for us to be aware of them? For two reasons. They could be mistaken for a neoplasm and treated as a tumor, or vice versa. A real neoplasm may be mistaken for a tumor-like condition and deprived of the appropriate and timely therapy. So what are these conditions? How do we classify them? Well, we'll use the traditional classification that we've been using since we entered med school. They're either congenital and developmental conditions, vascular conditions, infections, traumatic conditions, metabolic conditions, or miscellaneous. So we'll start with the congenital and developmental conditions. If you analyze this x-ray, you'll find that there is an abnormal lesion in the epiphysis of the distal femur and proximal tibia. It looks like an exostosis or an osteochondroma of an epiphyseal location, which is very rare. Well, actually, this turned out to be a dysplasia epiphysialis hemimedica. It's a congenital disorder that mimics bone tumor. The child presents with a swelling, but this swelling is not due to a tumor. It's due to a developmental condition. This patient has hereditary multiple exostosis. And suddenly, his leg, his thigh got swollen. And an MRI showed a large mass related to an osteochondroma. You might think that this is a malignant transformation of the osteochondroma. But if you look carefully, there is no cartilage cap. There is a double density here. And although this patient was mistaken for an osteochondroma and operated upon to excise this osteochondroma that turned malignant, it actually turned out to be an aneurysm. And to analyze, to differentiate between an aneurysm and a soft tissue tumor, aneurysms usually are pulsating. If you put a stethoscope, you can feel, you can listen to a thrill. And uh, malignant tumors don't grow suddenly. They don't grow in two or three days. And you always have to be suspicious, suspicious from the MRI pictures, suspicious from the clinical presentation. And if there wasn't a vascular team handy and available, this patient would have lost his limb. If you look at this X-ray, it shows multiple uh, uh, lesions in the distal femur and proximal tibia, bone forming lesions. Bone inside bone is always alarming. Uh, you're always suspicious that this could be a bone forming tumor or a sclerotic metastasis. Whereas if you look carefully, it has a very well defined and clear outline. The multiplicity and the uh, 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 pattern of these lesions suggest that these are bone infarcts. You see this picture with patients with prolonged steroid intake. Infection is the great mimic for tumors. And this is a patient who presented with shoulder pain. X-ray showed an osteolytic lesion of the proximal humerus. The differential diagnosis of this lesion should definitely include Ewing sarcoma and osteosarcoma. And if you see the MRI, it confirms the diagnosis of an, a destructive lesion inside the bone with a soft tissue extent outside. Contrast given, you can see here the central necrosis and the peripheral enhancement, which arises the suspicion of infection. Infection, there is always central necrosis and peripheral enhancement. This turned out to be an osteomyelitis, although this differential diagnosis should not be settled without a biopsy and a culture. 
This is another example of uh, infection of the distal femur that mimics osteosarcoma or Ewing sarcoma. Another example of a destructive lesion of the posterior iliac bone and the adjacent sacrum. MRI shows huge lesion extending to the soft tissue, cystic in nature. But the biopsy confirmed that this is pus and this was an infection in the sacroiliac joint. Another example of an osteolytic lesion in the metaphysis and epiphysis of a skeletally immature. You'll easily miss it as a, an epiphyseal tumor, a chondroblastoma with a metaphyseal extent, whereas actually this was a Brody's abscess. Another form of a Brody's abscess, stolytic lesion of the distal tibia. You could put in the differential diagnosis a simple bone cyst. But if you look at the MRI, there is central necrosis and a peripheral uh, uh, enhancement or a peripheral light around it. This is a Brody's abscess. You can see here the peripheral enhancement as well. This patient presented with an osteolytic lesion of the proximal tibia. Differential diagnosis would include a giant cell tumor, telangiectatic osteosarcoma, cystic fibrous dysplasia. MRI showed a lesion which is, shows multiple small cysts. Biopsy revealed that this was a hydatid cyst. And resection of the uh, upper tibia was done. And you can see here the multiple scolices inside. So this was not a tumor, this was a hydatid cyst, a form of infection. Traumatic conditions as well could mimic uh, uh, bone tumors. This is a patient with a painful upper tibia uh, without a specific trauma, but you can see here the sclerosis. You can miss it for an osteoid osteoma, it's hot on bone scan, but the MRI revealed the fracture line. This is a stress fracture. Another form of stress fracture with, with callus around, and this could be mistaken for a tumor of the metacarp, it's pure callus. A very common uh, 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 thing that goes into the differential diagnosis is myositis ossificans. It could be easily mistaken for a parosteal osteosarcoma or a, a soft tissue sarcoma. But if you look carefully, the, here the ossification has a peripheral pattern. It's empty from the inside, but then the ossification is peripheral. This was a myositis ossificans. And uh, radiogra it passes through several phases. First, it's a soft tissue mass without any ossification. Then it shows zonal calcification at the periphery, progressive ossification and maturation, forming a peripheral shell of bone that's empty from the inside. Marcitis ossificans or heterotopic ossification could have different patterns, like this pattern, which is common with uh, uh, traumatic brain injuries in patients in the ICU, which fuses the adjacent joints. Metabolic conditions also could mimic uh, neoplasm. This is an example of an osteolytic lesion on, on the head of the second metacarpal. Could easily pass as a giant cell tumor of the head of the metacarpal. And whereas actually biopsy revealed that it's a gouty arthritis. Uh, a patient presented to us with an, uh, a painful uh, distal radius. X-ray showed an osteolytic lesion. MRI showed the destructive lesion in the distal radius. Could easily diagnose it as a giant cell tumor. Whereas actually it turned to be a brown tumor due to hyperparathyroidism. You can see here the osteoporosis, the uh, parathyroid adenoma, apparently the parathyroid scan. This is a brown tumor of hyperparathyroidism that always should enter into the differential diagnosis of GCTs. Parathyroid, uh, brown tumors of hyperparathyroidism are not treated surgically. They actually uh, uh, form bone once the uh, parathyroid adenoma is uh, resected. You can see here the osteolytic lesion and after parathyroidectomy, uh, it forms bone. Another metabolic condition is tumoral calcinosis. You see here the massive calcification. It could be solitary, it could be multiple, and this is due to abnormal phosphate metabolism. 
mimics the tumor, whereas actually it's a metabolic condition. There are other miscellaneous conditions that could mimic neoplasm. This is a patient who presented with a swelling of, the, of her elbow. X-ray showed massive destruction of the elbow. And if you look carefully at the patient, she had uh, 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 lost her uh, peripheral eyebrows and she has different nasal features. And this patient actually had a Charcot arthropathy. It's due to leprosy. You can see Charcot joints with diabetes, diabetic patients. And these, although this is massive destruction, she had a painless uh, uh, elbow swelling. Uh, intraosseous ganglion cyst could mimic uh, different bone cysts. These are, these are examples of subchondral bone cysts. These are not real tumors. Osteopetrosis shows bone formation, but you can see the fractures. They have a very slim and clean cut patterns. It's like breaking a, a pencil. This is osteopetrosis and it's not prostate cancer. A patient presented to us with a pathological fracture of the humerus looks abnormal, there is some sort of destruction here. But when you see the MRI, you find that there is no infiltrating tissue inside. It's just the bone is bigger than normal, the cortices are bigger than normal, and the trabeculae are bigger than normal. It's hot on bone scan, and this turned out to be a Paget's disease. Another example of a Paget humerus, see here the bone is bigger than normal, trabeculae are bigger, the cortex is bigger than normal. This is how we diagnose Paget. Large tibia, large cortex, large medulla, and large trabeculae. This is the Paget proximal tibia. This is a very interesting uh, uh, case, actually. The patient presented with limping, and on doing a pelvic x-ray, we found that the superior pubic ramus is destroyed. And on doing an, a CT, we, didn't, we found that the superior pubic ramus is absent, but there is no tissues that replaced it. There are normal tissues around. This is actually a disappearing bone disease or Gorham's disease. It's a painless condition and the bones just disappear. And it's progressive. You can see here the absent superior pubic ramus. Six months later, there are no both sides pubic rami are absent as well as the inferior pubic ramus on the left side. An example of disappearing bone disease in the shoulder area, absent scapula and the humerus started to disappear. Now we come to the end of our lectures. I just want to make a note of certain lesions that are considered benign tumors, whereas they are actually, they are not tumors, they are tumor-like conditions. These include fibrous dysplasia, pigmented villanodular synovitis, chondromatosis, synovii, ganglia, giant cell reparative granuloma, norous lesions. These are not actual tumors, they're not benign tumors, they're tumor-like conditions as well. But in many classifications, they are grouped as part of the benign tumor lesions but you can still group them as tumor-like conditions. So what is our take-home message? How do we sort things out? You have to have a careful history taking that identify traumatic conditions, infections, metabolic symptoms, etc. You have to look at the patient as a whole, not just where he's complaining of. Use labs and special tests, have a high index of suspicion, Consider all tumor-like conditions to be tumor until you can prove otherwise. And whenever in doubt, always don't hesitate to take a biopsy for worsen diagnoses. Thank you very much.